So now that we've learned about the Azure Static Web Applications, I want to turn and talk about a bot that was mentioned by Rick just before, and that is of a cute, fuzzy animal in Australia, a quokka. It's only found on a small island off the coast of Perth, and it's the, it's the only place in Australia that the quokka can be found. So I thought, who would be the best person to talk about quokkas, chatbots, and integrating that as a front-end web developer, but none other than my friend Amy Kapernick, who is one of our Microsoft MVPs based in Perth. First off, Amy, is your pup joining us today for the stream, or have they been put outside to not interrupt? Uh, no, he he has he has sadly run off. Um, it took him about two weeks to get sick of being picked up and and joining in video calls. So so he will he will not be joining us today, unfortunately. Well, that's definitely a shame. And while I know your dog is cute, the audience really want to know about another cute animal, the quokka. And we've been talking about this backstage with the rest of the production crew, and most of them are like, I've never heard of this animal. So what did you tell us a bit about a quokka? And what does it have to do with chatbots? Uh, so as, as you've said, a uh, quokka is an animal only found off the coast of Perth. Uh, on Rottnest Island, uh, except occasionally they, they do stow aboard a boat and make it to the mainland. Um, and so Quokkabot was, was something I originally started building, uh, would have been towards the end of last year, back when we were allowed to go to conferences. I, I built a quick demo using Twilio's WhatsApp API where you could ask for a picture of a quokka and it would send you one because who doesn't love pictures of quokkas? I, I mean, I've been hearing Sonia asking for the animal feed all day. This is great. You can get them right on, on demand. Excellent. And I recently read a blog post that you wrote about uh, migrating the functionality to Azure Functions uh, from the other serverless model that you were using before. Uh, we'll make sure that we put out a tweet of that um, article if people want to learn a bit more about how you can do the deployment of that into to Azure using our serverless model. But when we were talking about um, a, a quok, well, not just Quokkas, but talking about Azure in general and your experience as a front-end web developer, you told me that you were building uh, another bit of functionality into your Quokka bot. Can you tell us a bit about the, the that next phase of it? Yes, um, yes. Yeah. So the the next phase uh, involved. So it, it originally just would send photos, but but then someone came up with the idea of uh, you could send in a picture and it would tell you whether or not there is a quokka in the photo. So for, for the second stage, I integrated uh, Microsoft's Cognitive Services Custom Vision API and it did the image classification. So I fed it a bunch of images and said these are quokkas and then a bunch more and said these are not quokkas. And, and from that, it started to learn to recognize whether or not there's a quokka in an image. So it can do the image recognition from there. Cool. So from a front-end web development perspective, uh, obviously we can talk to it via chatbots, um, but is there going to be like a web portal to this as well so that I can um, learn a bit more about uh, the application, um, see anything, you know, get, get pictures on demand via the web as well? Yes, yes, there are definitely plans. So at the moment, at the moment, it was uh, Twilio, WhatsApp, and SendGrid APIs, so via WhatsApp and email. But yes, I did definitely want to have a, a web front as well, and to to not only allow you to interact with it, but just to get you give you a little bit more information. Because as you've noticed, when you say Quokkabot, the first people, the first thing people ask is, "What? What's that? What are you talking about?" Um, so I, I wanted I wanted a website where I could have a bit more information about what it is and how you can interact with it, and also have a few more pictures of quokkas. Excellent. So that sounds like the perfect sort of thing that we'd want to be deploying onto the Azure Static Web Apps because it doesn't need a, um, uh, like a server backend. You've got that in your serverless model, uh, and instead we we can deploy it as just CSS, HTML, and I'm going to assume a little bit of JavaScript. I know that I know that you like just to a little not bit. always have to throw JavaScript in there, so, uh, but, but as a JavaScript person, I just want to make sure that there's always enough JavaScript to just make the processes lock up a little bit with inside of your browser. So why don't you show us what you've got, and let's have a look at how we can put that up on the Azure Static website. Yeah, so if I share my screen. Uh, 
so 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 this this is the the static site that we have. Uh, look, it's it's nothing fancy. I I am a front end developer, but I am not a designer. Uh, so it's uh, for the moment it's very simple. But we gave a little bit of information about what Quokkabot is, what Quokkas are, where you can find them. Uh, the bit about the technology behind it. Uh, as with any good application, I need to have a graph showing where the data flowed. Uh, and then at the bottom, I've I've also put in so the the blog posts that you mentioned reading, Aaron. I've I've actually put the blog posts on here as well, so you can find a little bit more information about how it's been built. So it's a static website made uh, with Eleventy which is a static site generator that I really enjoy using because you can start off with just HTML and CSS and you can expand on the functionality as, as much as you want to be able to do. As you said, there is a little bit JavaScript as a bit, little bit of JavaScript as well. So I built a custom results page, which allows us to, to have a look at any of the past images that have been sent in to see the results, and then also to see uh, the the last the last photo that someone was sent as a picture of a quokka. So there's a little bit of JavaScript doing the the functionality for that bit. And that last one doesn't look a whole lot like a quokka. It looks like someone's feet. Um, so that or my screen is just a little bit too far away for me to tell what it really is. Yeah, I was going to say because all of the results that I'm seeing are very much quokka looking. So I'm not sure what you're <laughs> well, seeing. I, I, yes, I can definitely say that uh, my screen is probably a little bit out of focus. <laughs> probably. So, yes. So let's go about having, uh, let's go about you know, tackling something that I did yesterday and attempting to do some live coding uh, off script and see how, about we can, uh, how we go about deploying this to Azure Static Web Apps. Yep. Okay, so this is already in a GitHub repository. Um, so it's here and ready to go. Um, it's in a public repository, although you mentioned yesterday that this now works with private repositories as well. Um, so having just watched the previous demo, I can go through and uh, create a new static web app. and hope that my internet can handle doing this and a Teams call at the same time. <laughs> the joys of the Australian internet is uh, we're at the mercy of a very small pipe. Yeah, well, if it if it worked for Lars's call yesterday, uh, he has much worse internet than I do, so it should be right. Um, I've, I've already got, I, I want to keep it in the same resource group that my, uh, my Azure function is in and my custom vision just to kind of keep all the resources together. Um, naming things is hard uh, and try and find some region as close to Australia as possible. Yeah, so at the moment with the preview builds, uh, not all Azure regions have this deployed out, but that's more for where the functions will live and for the um, staging URLs that get generated from pull requests. Uh, otherwise, we actually deploy the code uh, across all of our data centers in a geo-redundant format. So as people are accessing your deployed website, they'll hit the region that is closest to them, which uh, we've got, I think it was 61 regions was announced the other day. So that, that means you kind of get this lovely geo distribution by default when you're doing a, a static web app. Yeah, I'm. I'm not super bothered by regions anyway. I. I don't. I don't have any legal concerns um, that define where I need to be hosting things. Uh, so choosing my organization and the repo, and I want to just go from the master branch because life is too short to try and do anything on dev. Uh, okay, so it'll start in the root folder. I don't have an API in this, so this will just ignore that because it can't find that folder. And when the site builds, it builds out to an underscore site folder. 
And what's worth noting mm-hmm. about that um, underscore site folder, or, or if you the folder that you have to create for the uh, the output location, is that that's relative to where the um, the root of the web uh, the website source code is. So because of a slash, it's just um, underscore site. But if you are in like a slash src folder, you don't need to prefix that um, output folder with slash src because it will um, it will just append that into the URL. Yeah. Cool. Now I hope that the deployment works. Um, I, and this I will, is the, the I will joys ad- of a live demo. Yes, I, I will admit after your live demo yesterday, uh, I did do one practice run this morning. Um, so, so, so hopefully this is working. Uh, however, I would like to say, although you did have issues yesterday, um, at least you had the light stayed on. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Yes. I, I have been giving a presentation where uh, the entire power went out in the room, and that's a very difficult one to try and recover from because you don't even have a, uh, a backup projector because there's absolutely no power in the room whatsoever. Yes. Um, oh, so it looks okay. like it's deploying. It looks like it's done. So I can click here to check out the GitHub action. Um, and now this is really great because I've been meaning to try out GitHub actions but sort of haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Yeah, and it actually, because it provisions all this stuff for you as well, like if you're not overly familiar with GitHub Actions, uh, you can get it scaffolded. So you can use that as a boilerplate for what you want to do with your um, your CI and CD process. And again, because it's just a GitHub Action that lives with inside of the um, Git repo, you can go in and modify that file. Uh, if you realize that you accidentally typed um, the directory where the, the website lives or the output folder or your API folder incorrectly, um, you can easily come back and change them push it up as a new commit, and that will just pick up and um, deploy on uh, continuously. You can even add, add additional steps into that. So if you wanted to run tests um, against your back end or something like that, you could include those as well. So we can see that the, the build is kicking off. It's doing the, all the things that we look for with um, an application like an NPM install, an NPM build, and, and all that sort of stuff to get up and running. I, I like that it's actually using yarn as well because that's what I use. So it's identified that I have a yarn lock file and therefore it's using it over NPM. Yeah, and, and that's great because um, it, it means that you're not locked into having to do something just the way that's prescribed. Like if you are someone who prefers to use yarn as their um, package manager uh, over the uh, NPM registry, then that's cool. We'll, we'll follow that because that's the way that you want your um, code base represented and the way that you want your deployments to happen. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the so fun bit about live it. demos. Exactly, and yeah. You know, so it'll, it'll take a minute or two to to deploy, uh, and then once that happens, um, we'll, we'll hopefully get to see uh, a live running front end for our Quackabot and be able to to see what I'm absolutely confused of as the the most recently uploaded image. Uh, but we can also see the the um, the Quackers that have been previously uploaded. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, they they look like um, the confidence level from Cognitive Services across the bottom of those to say whether like how confident it was that that's a Quacker, um, which is also kind of cool. Yes. Okay. That looks like that's worked. I don't know. It's looking green. Uh, so oh, if it's green, then it's got to deploy. There we go. That is now our live page. I can see the results. Uh, and yeah, you're right. So this is this is the confidence level at the bottom. And what I can actually do is on WhatsApp, I can then send through. Uh, another photo. Um, so seeing as my dog wouldn't join us on the call today, uh, here's a picture of him as a puppy. And if we watch as it comes through, it will send the results back. And that's now updated on the web page as well um, that it, it's something that has been sent in. So there, that, was, that was pretty cool. So that's already set up. And, and how easy was that to, to get started with an application you're just looking for somewhere to deploy, uh, like a really simple integration point? I guess the next thing is to look whether or not you can bring those functions that you've got in a separate resource into the, the static web apps platform so that you've got one single deployment unit. Um, but that's probably something that you don't want to do live on stream in the final 25 seconds that we've got, is it? 
Yes, yes, I'm, I'm not entirely sure I can do that in the next 20 seconds, but yes, that is definitely something I want to do. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give that a go on my Twitch stream next week uh, when, when, I have, when I have a little bit more time to, to stuff up a live demo. So I'm definitely going to be pulling that in next week. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Amy, for joining us and showing us um, how to go around and set up an application on static web apps, and particularly as the perspective of someone who's a front-end engineer, and uh, it might not be your focus around how you do infrastructure and things like that. Um, I'll, let you, I'll let you go and enjoy the rest of the afternoon uh, watching Build Live. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Aaron.